in front of us now is the cosine curve alright so this is how the cosine curve looks like rather similar to the sine curve really as we'll um, find out later right, but what is more important now is to have a look and have a discussion on how the cosine curve gets its shape suppose we have a unit circle like what we did in the previous um, sine curve all right radius will be one one so we all know that if I were to draw a right angle triangle inside this first quadrant and I call this angle here theta alright now all of us should know that when we cosine theta will be the adjacent side which I shall call y over the hypotenuse which is 1 so therefore we know that y is equal to cosine theta and the y is obviously referring to the horizontal length what we notice rather interestingly is that when theta is equal to zero, that means to say when there's no angle at all, we'll have a flat line, isn't it? Okay, a horizontal line here. So y will then be horizontal. But what is more interesting is when theta is equal to zero, our y will have the maximum value of one because the radius is one and therefore the y value will never be more than one, right? So when theta is equal to zero, we get our y value as one. So that's how we mark out this point here. As theta increases to become, say, 90 degrees, all right, then we start to realize something rather interesting here is the fact that, well, when theta is 90 degrees, there is no triangle. So there's no triangle to even speak about, and therefore there will be no horizontal side for the triangle. So when theta is equal to 90 degrees, we'll have y equals to 0, which is here. And let us proceed on to check if uh, what happens next when theta is 180 degrees. So when theta is 180 degrees, again, the y becomes a flat line, isn't it? So this is a flat line, and therefore, our y will have another maximum value of 1. But this time round, because it is in the negative side, okay, it is actually negative 1 here, so our y value will then be negative 1, which is represented by this value here, negative 1, when x is pi, which is 180 degrees. And of course, needless to say, uh, when our theta is 270 degrees here, we get another vertical line, and therefore, we get another 0. So what we realize is the fact that our cosine curve is actually a representation of the length of the horizontal side of the right angle triangle okay, with respect to our theta. As our theta increases, our horizontal length actually decreases. Okay, decreases as you can see, right? It decreases and to a point it becomes zero, and then the horizontal line then becomes a maximum again, increases again, but this time around it's a negative value and then becomes zero again. So, this is um, precisely almost similar, almost the same as what happened in, in the case of y is equal to sine x. Alright, now let's take a look at a mini animation to fully understand, okay, to see this in animated form, what exactly uh, is going on. Alright, now, this is precisely what is going on, okay, slightly different from what we saw in sine function. Well, the idea is the same. So pay attention to this red line here, as you will see. Uh, I wish I can slow this down a little, but, well, I can't do that. So, pay attention to the horizontal line. Okay, as you can see, as your theta increases, okay, this is increasing theta, okay, because angle is increasing in anti-clockwise direction, right? So, as your theta is increasing, you realize that our horizontal length is actually uh, increasing and decreasing at the same time. So, as theta changes, all right, so does the horizontal length. Okay, and that's how we get the shape that we're seeing. So similarly to our sine curve, the cosine curve has got negative angles as well. Okay, as we talked about earlier on that the, the angle can go clockwise or anti-clockwise and in fact goes on forever. Alright, so and therefore um, the curve is not restricted to only up to 2 pi, which is 360 degrees. So it can go on up to 4 pi, 5 pi and in fact 1000 degrees as we already know by right now. Okay, so similar to the sine curve as well is the fact that the maximum value for cosine curve is at 1, minimum value is at negative 1. Okay, similarly. Now, and you may start to realize, hey, 
you know, the sine curve looks almost exactly like cosine curve. Or some of you may even think that they are looking exactly the same. Okay, let me show you uh, how your sine curve and the cosine curve uh, look like side by side. The one below is, of course, our sine curve, and of course, the one above is our cosine curve. Uh, you. People who thought that you know sine curve and cosine curve are exactly the same can be uh, very easily forgiven because in fact it, the shape is exactly the same. Okay, the only difference is the starting point. Or right? you realize that for sine x the starting point is at zero, while for cosine x the starting point is at one. The reason is very simple because remember the unit circle that we were talking about just now previously, okay? And remember that for sine the y is actually the vertical height, okay? Where for cosine the y is actually the horizontal height, and that is why for sine it starts with zero and for cosine it starts with one. But uh, nevertheless, everything else will be exactly the same. Now, similarly to our sine curve, the cosine curve is also divided into four different quadrants. Alright, so as you can see here, this is the first quadrant which is from 0 to half pi, which is 0 to 90 degrees. And of course, 90 degrees to 1 pi, which is 90 degrees to the 180 degrees. And of course, uh, 1.5 pi, which is your 3 over 2 pi, right? 1 and a half pi, which is 270 degrees. And of course, um, 2 pi, which is 360 degrees. Okay? So again, the assumption here is that you are pretty familiar with radian, right? So, um, this is in fact the four quadrants that uh, we know of, which is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? And again, based on our all science teacher crazy, okay? All science teacher crazy. Now we know that for cosine, Okay, uh, cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrant, okay, which is represented here. Alright, so as you can see in the first quadrant, our cosine is in the positive, the y is positive. And in the second quadrant, okay, cosine is negative. Third quadrant, cosine is negative as well. But for the fourth quadrant, the final quadrant, our cosine is again positive. Alright, and by looking at one full circle, Okay, that means to say from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Okay, this will give us our one period. Alright, so therefore we know that uh, the, the shape of our cosine curve for one period okay, will be this um, something like a V shape um, uh, graph. Alright, so this is uh, significantly different from our sine curve. Okay, remembering that our sine curve will look a little like this. One period for sine curve will look a little like this, okay, something like a roller coaster um, type of uh, curve, okay, and uh, one period for our cosine curve will look something like a V shape, okay, because it starts from one and goes down to negative one and then goes up back to one again, okay, for our sine, we start from zero, goes up to one, comes down all the way to negative one, and then goes back to zero again. And of course, the magnitude or the amplitude of the cosine curve. Alright, it's the same as our sine curve, which is the uh, the distance between the maximum value to the middle line of the curve. So the middle line of the curve, okay, will be the x-axis in this case, and therefore uh, from the x-axis to the maximum point. Alright, uh, this will give us the magnitude of the curve, and of course in this case it will be a one. Alright, so this is in short what the cosine curve is all about right it is very very important that you have a good understanding of how it looks like okay and the uh, specific characteristic of the cosine curve the sine curve and as well what we're going to talk about next the tangent curve because all this uh, knowledge of these characteristics will help you to sketch these curves in a quicker time